The process of ring flipping will take each equatorial substituent and make it an axial substituent. Also, atoms that are puckered up above that average plane become puckered down. Let's take a look at the process of ring flipping in three dimensions. So here we have a ring form of cyclohexane. In order to monitor the ring flip process, it'll be helpful to color the axial substituents red. By the time this process is finished, these axial substituents will have transformed into the equatorial position. So let's begin the animation. What's actually happening here, and we'll study this in more detail, is a torsional change, a conformational change about the carbon-carbon single bonds in the ring. And by the time the process is over, which if I stop right now, those axial hydrogens have transformed into equatorial positions. You can see that all around the perimeter are those red atoms which used to occupy axial position. Let's take a look at the animation once more, this time viewing down the Newman projection. What we're going to see is that for the most part, there's a large amount of torsional rotation on the left half. That gets us into the twist boat form. Then there'll be a large amount of torsional rotation on the right half, and that gets us from the twist boat into the ring flipped form. Let's try to see that as it unfolds. I'll try to move into a projection where we can see what's going on. Most of the torsion taking place right now is on the left hand side, and then that'll be followed by torsion largely on the right hand side. That gets us into the ring flip form, and now the reverse process begins by mostly moving the right hand side, and then now finally it finishes off by movement of the left hand side. That gets us back to the original conformation. Here's another animation that allows us to break down the process in discrete steps. We're going to monitor energy on the vertical axis and we'll look at the side view of the cyclohexane chair. So here is the top carbon atom and here's the bottom carbon atom. We're in the chair conformation now at the lowest energy. If we go to the half chair, that's the very top of this energy curve. We call that a barrier height of 45 kilojoules per mole and there's the structure. We can go to what's here labeled as the skew boat. We've been calling it the twist boat. It's actually a minimum on this potential energy curve, and there's the structure. We can keep going on. The boat form is another barrier, and there's the structure of the boat that we've seen before. And if we allow this to play through, we'll get to the ring flip form eventually. I can stop it there, and we're back to a chair form that's been ring flipped. Let me draw your attention to something that's a little bit peculiar about this plot. We had no problem defining energy on the vertical axis, but take note that there is no label on the horizontal axis. What parameter describes the process of ring flipping? The reason there's no label is because it's a complex process that can't be described by a single variable. In the animation we saw that two torsional changes, one first on the left hand side and then a second on the right hand side, were needed in order to describe the complete chair flipping process. A more complete description of the cyclohexane ring flip process involves a surface, not a curve, a surface where we can define the parameters that are involved in the change in going from one ring flip form to another. And those are those two torsions that we noted in the animation, which are on opposite sides of the cyclohexane ring. On this potential energy surface, which is represented as a contour plot, each of these lines are constant energy. This is also color-coded. Yellow is low energy, and so this point here represents one form, one ring-flipped form of cyclohexane. And then the white line is what's known as the minimum energy pathway, and so we're traveling up energy, blue is high energy, until we get to what's called a saddle point, the same thing as a barrier or a transition state. Now what this minimum energy pathway really is can best be described as traveling on an energy landscape where we're looking for the path of least resistance in order to get from one valley over a mountain pass to another valley. The saddle point is where a minimum on this potential energy surface reaches, meets a maximum traveling from along the path of least resistance. And so we're looking for these saddle points. These are what are going to be known as transition state structures. In the case of our minimum energy pathway, we first moved along a direction nearly parallel to torsion 1. That's because the most significant changes were taking place in torsion 1. We got to our barrier, which was the half chair form. 
And then we turned around and we started moving towards Jin Tu until we got to the, bear, the valley that's on the other side. This valley happens to be the twist boat form. Now if we continue along this pathway, we're going over a barrier. That barrier happens to be that boat form into another twist boat on the other side. We could, however, continue to travel along Torsion 2, and out here there's another saddle point, which would be another half chair barrier, and once we get over that, we would end up being in another, the other ring flipped form of cyclohexane. And so you can see that largely we can describe the ring flipping process as first moving along Torsion 1, and then moving along torsion 2 on this potential energy surface. What I want you to take away from that explanation is that this curve has definite meaning. It's the minimum energy pathway on a more complicated surface. Even though we can't describe this horizontal axis in terms of one variable, the thing that matters most is what's the change in energy from the minimum to the barrier height, and what are the positions in energy of those other minima. These are the important parameters that will describe the process of chemical change, not just for the ring flipping of cyclohexane, but for just about every chemical change that we encounter in organic chemistry.